Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and this is the part where I usually introduce Silver, but I'm concerned. Tara, what the hell did you do in this episode? Uh, what are you talking about? There's mushrooms everywhere, like... What did you do? What you and Parasite did? Well, I didn't do anything. I don't even grow mushrooms on my back. That's what you want us to think. Ain't I right, Silver? Oh, Parasect, one of the most troubling Pokemon in the entire franchise. That is true. Well, if you think about it, there's others, like that one that... Uh, Pokemon is just strange and scary. Pokemon is scary and they're going to kill us all. <laughs> and they smell funny. All right, Silver, I'll show you all the wonderful Pokemon you can encounter, and you might maybe explode a few ones, you know. We what? Explode? Well, what, what do you mean? Well, I mean, there's the Voltorbs. They explode oh. when you get close to them. Ah, all right. If I fire a rocket at them, too. <laughs> I'm just saying. I have a video for you to watch, Silver. It's from Plague of Gripes. <laughs> Plague of Gripes? Yes. We'll talk about that one later on. <laughs> Sounds like YouTube reviewers. I know, he ain't no reviewer. But anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review The Witch Academia Season 1, Episode 8. In this episode, after drinking an experimental brew, Susie falls into a deep sleep and won't wake up. To save her, Lotte sends Akko into Susie's mushroom-filled dream. Wow, description. So anywho, before we start, first impressions are in order, and Silver, what do you think? Well, this one is just silly fun. I mean, th this is probably the most over-the-top I've seen Little Witch Academia in a long time. If they've been trying to go big emotion and feeling, and now suddenly they're just like, yeah, let's talk about the psychopath. <laughs> Yeah, the psychopath that everybody considers a waifu. Uh, why am I not surprised? At the same time, it this look into her psyche really makes you think, you know, if this were a real person, I'd stay way the hell away from them. Totally agree. Way the hell away from them. Anyway, uh, Tara, what, what do you think? I mean, I have, I'm like mixed on it. At the end, it just makes me go, huh? What did I just go through? It's, uh, how do you say it? it? Makes you go on a wild ride like you just had mushrooms. <laughs> Maybe that's the effect that they wanted to go with. <laughs> and how do you know, Terra? Have you consumed the magic shrooms? No. I think I've just been hanging out with that one mushroom Pokemon that has the Pokeball on its head. That has a Pokeball on its head? Yeah, you don't know? Tortera, I am so far behind in how many uh, Pokemon there are. In my day, there were 150. One. 151. <laughs> Don't forget about that one one. I will forget about that one one because I'm going to stick to 150. It's a nice even number. 151? You can't forget about Mew. Yeah, you can't forget about Mew and Mewtwo. I, f I find you two are just mewing about this too much. <laughs> Who? Fungus. Yeah, Fungus. Wait, did you just Does send it to group or silver only? Yeah, I just put it in the group now. That's the uh, Pokemon. That one. Yeah, I, I remember him. Strange one. I don't remember that. It's all new. Let us go back to talking about <laughs> witches and mushrooms and illegal consumption thereof. <laughs> but, but, but anywho, uh, what were we talking about again? Uh, what, uh, were we yeah. talking about mushrooms? Yeah, okay. So, consul no, okay, you didn't take any. All right, good, 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 good. Uh, did you finish your thoughts, Tara? Not yet, right? <laughs> Uh, I forget. The mushrooms made me forget. <laughs> <laughs> so what but no, that's, that was everything. <laughs> All right. Uh, as for me, this episode was wacky. Wacky insane. Uh, it's one of those things where I saw this episode and I still got no idea what I just watched. But anywho, um, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. It's strange, right? Like, it is great it is a great episode but it's so strange so anywho we start off the episode with our hero Susie in her room trying to create a potion and said potion allows her to amplify her magic times 10 am I right times 10 right 
It'd be over 9,000. Something like that. So she she finished creating the potion and decides to drink it on the spot. But she thought about it beforehand, thinking that, oh, this could be dangerous because it's not tested yet. So let's give it to Akko. But somewhere in her mind says, you know what? If it works, Akko will be powerful. No, I shall be the powerful one and I shall consume said potion. <laughs> and in the next morning, uh, we see that Akko is late for class. Lotte is trying to wake Susie up, but she's not waking up because, well, it seems that the potion that she drank put her into a deep sleep coma. We're going to pause here for a while. So, Silver, what do you think? Okay, first off, you see a lot more about Susie and her personality. I'll get to collect all the mushrooms in the world without having to deal with people. <laughs> I mean, it's like, wow, I thought I was an introvert. Uh, this person is a misanthrope. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, at but, least she's not talking about old age. Meh, she will eventually. <laughs> but just the excitement and also the posing she does with the lightning uh, changing her look. I mean, some true mad scientist. It's magnificent. Reminds me of Dexter. Like, the, the fingers, the pose, the outfit. It just reminds me of Dexter's lab. It's like... There's a cool shout out. Better that than Johnny Test. Uh -huh. And Tara, what about you? Mm, I, honestly, I'm surprised with the beginning too because we usually see Susie. She's uh, usually all quiet and um, monotone, I guess you could say. But here, it's like you see her insanity and she's like, oh, I could do all this. And then she's like, wait a minute, this might kill me. I'll test it on you. And she's like, wait a minute, this might work. I'll test it on me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. She might become a competent witch. Can't have that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but anywho, I'm going to carry on. Uh, are you done, Tara? Yes. All right. Anywho, I'm going to carry on. So, Akko and Lotte will go, uh, come back to their room after class. And Susie is still asleep. But now, she's surrounded by mushrooms. And that's not good. That's not good at all. Akko tries to wake her up and Lotte discovers that, oh, uh, Susie must have been experimenting with some potions. And uh, the thing is, Akko wanted to go fetch a lecturer because uh, this is a serious situation where they need help. But Lotte just reminds her that if you go do so, uh, we might be in trouble and that's not good. And they go back and forth with the whole, uh, we should go get a lecturer. Uh, Lotte says, uh, no, we get in trouble. Remember all the times that happened, blah, 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 blah. And Akko just says, okay, um, what can we do without getting a adult for our situation here? Lotte just remembered a spell. Uh, so this spell is where a selected user or a volunteer goes into the mind of the person that is having a witch coma and wake her up in the dream world. So, Lotte casts a spell and whacks Akko right side of the head to make her go into Susie's dream. Whacks her upside the head? Robert, I think your language is far too peaceful. She bas she KOs her. She <laughs> clobbers her. <laughs> <laughs> Akko is going to be time displaced because her friend Lotte just knocked her into next month. And if you listen to that impact, you know it's that hard. Yeah. My teeth hurt after hearing that. <laughs> yeah, but, but there's a missing sound effect. Zoom, zoom. Oh, if it went with that sound effect, her whole head would have just come off. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Lotte is on, be strong with the dark side. Lotte just just pushed her friend down some stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I won't fault them for using that kind of sound effect in this episode. Sounds about right. Give it time. <laughs> it it, it's right. it it only it's only downstairs from here. <laughs> oh boy. So anywho, once 
Akko got smacked right in the head. Uh, she falls asleep and is in Susie's dream. And in Susie's dream, there's a lot of mushrooms. There is a lot of mushrooms. And in the dream, we get to see a bunch of mushrooms carrying a sword and shield. Uh, some people might say that is a Chekhov's gun. Hmm. I say it's more of a Pokemon reference. <laughs> Aha! I see what you did there. <laughs> but then again, this came out way before the game was announced, so maybe it was some foreshadowing. Probably. Uh, but anywho... Uh, when Akko is trying to interact with the mushroom people, we, we see that there's two creatures, pixies, whatever it is. Uh, it is the angel and devil, and one, uh, they're, they're what, uh, Susie's uh, subconscious, something like that? They're her morality and immorality, her conscience and her inner devil. Yeah. Although, good luck telling them apart. <laughs> yeah. So, let's just say that their consciousness or whatever it is are... Let's just say that Susie here could use a bit of help. Like, she, she could use a lot of help. But anywho, uh, Ako asked them where to find the original... Susie and they say that oh you can get the original Susie in that apartment building there that's shaped like a mushroom. So they walk there and try to get to Susie just to wake her up. So along the way they meet up with a lot of other Susies. So I'm just gonna summarize things here and uh, the inside the dream world or inside the mind of Susie is her subconsciousness and her personality. Uh, they first meet up with a lazy person, uh, with a lazy Susie, uh, and then we meet up with a impatient Susie, and we meet up with a Susie that like mushrooms, uh, and likes to be copying other people and, and so on. Like this is the subconscious mind of Susie. This reminds me of Raven from Teen Titan, where Beast Boy and Cyborg goes into her subconsciousness and meet up with a lot of different personality of Raven. You remember the episode? Yes. I was thinking of that as I watched this episode. Yeah. So it is the same thing, but it, it's much more in, let's just say that Little Witch did it more crazy. I keep wondering about Susie who wants to be augmented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also there's the alpaca Susie that wants to spit on Who just wants to spit on people. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but anywho, um, I'm going to pause here. Um, Tara, what do you think of this, man? Well, I mean, obviously, right off the bat, you could see that with uh, all of Susie's personality. And even though there's, like, the angel version of her, I still love how she's like, you know, you can't use that kind of weapon. She's like, yeah, that's right. It's like, you got to use this. <laughs> it's like, wow, even though she's, an a she's uh, like, in the angel uniform, she's still a bit evil. Let's just say that this is on brand for Susie because Susie here has always been mor morally, what is it, um, gray... Um, she, she's not the best out there and having an angel and a devil, like the devil wants to kill Akko and make her suffer while the angel just wants to kill Akko and make it quick as possible. So it's on brand, but man, is her moral compass so skewed. It's also great to see all these different kinds of personalities. And like we said, it, it reminds us of Raven from Teen Titans with her different personalities. But I feel like here, there's way more personalities than just, uh, I think it was seven in Teen Titans. Probably, yeah. Of course, I'm also thinking of the My Little Pony where we enter Big Macintosh's mind. That's a good one. That's a good one. Depressed Mac over protective Mac. <laughs> um, is that from a comic? Yeah. Yes. Oh, but okay, because I was gonna say I've never seen that episode. Oh, you you should you should watch. Sorry, you should read that comic because it is, it is a fun one. But still, look, um, now that you mention it, the comic and this episode feel similar. When would when did that came out? Oh gosh, that was 
that was one of the earliest Friends Forever. Friends Forever. So it had to be like what, 2015, 2016? Um, go. I, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out and research for a bit. So, uh, Tara, you're done, or you have more to say? Mm, no, I'm done. All right. So, Silver, what about you? Well, getting to see all these Susies is just a delight. I mean, you you feel like, oh, she's got such a complex personality. I had no idea. Why is she a... That's not a word. ...in every single one. <laughs> wow. Well, she is. I mean, you, you get to it and you just realize, wow, there is no... You notice there's never one that feels love for another person. There's no guilty Susie. It's like, wow, she's completely unrepentant for sticking a spigot in her friend's mouth and trying to force feed her an elixir. <laughs> oh, it's like, yeah. yeah. It's like, holy Hassan Pfeffer. <laughs> so yes, I don't care if I've invoked the sweetie bot. I, I just like, wow, you know, start to have doubts about this whole friendship thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? Uh, Susie here is just morally questionable. Questionable? It's not even a multiple choice. I find her just morally bankrupt. And it's fun to watch because we're not the direct victims. But then I thought about Akko. It's like, you know what? I actually feel sorry for her now. <laughs> Aw, Akko. Your friend just wants to murder you. I'm just starting to think that, but you know, maybe the witch world just sucks. <laughs> so is it okay just to acknowledge that, that being a witch kind of sucks? Because even your friends try to kill you. I mean, they're, they're awesome people. Yeah, there's some uh, we call Wiccans out there that are nice. Oh, hashtag not all Wiccans? <laughs> well, I don't oh, know. I, I haven't encountered a lot of them. Oh, but which Wiccan? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I see, see, see. Uh, right, I, I, I have I, undone you with my masterful puns. I got some info here. I got some info here. They're, uh, they're witches in disguise. <laughs> do, 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 do. So anyway. Yep, that comes in a few weeks. Yay. So anyway, I got some info here. So uh, the Friends Forever issue 17 starring Twilight and Big Mac published date was on June 3rd, 2015 while the Little Witch episode Akko's Adventure in Suzy World uh, airs in February 26, 2017 in Japan and June 30th, 2017 uh, Netflix Global. So, uh, hmm. There's a few years gap, so there's a possibility that this episode copied this one? I sincerely doubt that. The idea of going into someone's mind and getting to explore their psyche is not anything unique to the past few years. This is a this is a touched upon concept, it's just the the fun is in the execution. Hmm, true, true. And it feels <laughs> like <laughs> uh but it feels like that uh, it, it it has the same beat. It, it has the same beat where uh, they're introduced to a little version of the main character or the character that is, uh, the, whatchamacallit, uh, a fairy or an angel devil kind of thing. Then we get to see multiple personalities and then we get to see a huge battle. I mean, it feels like the same beat. That's, that's the thing. Like It's so similar that one might say that one copied the other. Well, again, I'm not sure. I I find that when stories run parallel, maybe it's just a really good story idea and great minds think alike. I agree with that. I can't yet say, oh, this was directly inspired by this, unless by chance the uh, writing staff were like, oh, yes, I remember reading this issue of My Little Pony or seeing this episode of Teen Titans and be like, hey, that would be a fun idea. Now, let me apply it to a character who wants to murder her friends and spit on them. <laughs> yeah. And murder them after they spit on them. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It's it's one of those things where it's a happy coincidence where the type of story that is being told is so good that it's re being repeated in other places by chance. For chance to dream. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, uh, Silver, you done? Yep. All right, then. So, anywho, uh, we meet up with another Susie, and said Susie is a kind Susie. She's giving Akko flowers, so that's nice. And oh, uh, they're not explosive; they're not poisonous or anything. So Akko's safe. Then suddenly the popos come along and catches this Susie, and she has no rights. They put him in the paddy wagon, 
and sent to court. And once in court, we get to see the multiple facets of Susie from one that wants to read the book that Lotte likes. What was it again? Uh, Nightfall, was it? I think so. Yeah. And one wants to be popular and so on. I mean, it's there, there's, a, there's a lot of multifaceted characters that are being suppressed and being executed. Uh, yeah, they're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ako doesn't like this and stops the punishment, but somehow she gets involved too. And well, uh, before they can execute all the Susies, Ako brushes in and save the little Susie's life and all of the Susie's life and set them free. Uh, somehow, that's not a good idea, but still, uh, Ako saves them and they go on their merry way. Back in reality, we see Lotte just waiting around for Ako to finish her job and the mushrooms are growing on her hand and that is bad that is very bad this reminds me of the last of us oh no she's going to turn into a clicker oh no uh anywho uh, back in lotte's world they walk around trying to well just head to the um uh, apartment building that's shaped like a mushroom where they well kind of fail because Ako decides to hitchhike a ride and go to the cinema. And in the cinema, we get to see a movie. The movie is just basically Susie's memory of her life. And it's just memories of her in uh, Luna Nova, where she gets to see how um, Diana is in a stuck a snob. And we get to see. Uh, what you might call this, Ako, and Ako is done in a traditional, um, I won't say Disney, but in a traditional, um, cartoon style. I found it more anime esque. Really, the early anime. Er- well, actually, no, not. Who did like Buddy and Bosco and all that stuff? The I think it was more Looney Tunes. Probably, I I don't remember, but it's. It feels that way. It's trying to portray it that way. But anywho, um, in the memory, they show Susie's interaction with Akko. And it's really mean. Like, Susie here is a mean friend where she does a lot of mean things to Akko. But somehow, no matter how much Susie bullies her, she always have a special... Uh, f- memory of their first meeting where they m- met on the bridge and I, I think this is what uh, Akko striking up a conversation with Susie and being friends with her and that there the art style for that one is very anime-esque very nice but anywho um, as the movie goes on we, we get to see uh, some shared memories and whatnot, and it seems that in reality, uh, the whole school is engulfed by mushroom and is in a very bad state where the mushroom is taking over and destroying the school, and that's not good at all. And everybody's face is in a panic, like all the Susies. They're horrified by the things that's going on, except for one where she laughs and finds joy in this. Like she revels in it. She even laughs. And that is the little Susie that Ako save. And I think what? Um one of the two, the Angel of the Devil mentions that this is the uh part of Susie where if she just acts on her emotion and feeling and don't think about the repercussions. This is what happened. Is that am I right, Silver? Yeah, everyone has a, a repressed selfish side. This is just although, to be honest, it almost seems like a redundancy with Susie involved. 
It's like, I honestly don't see that much of a difference. <laughs> well, except some of her, some of her emotions are just control and not going overboard. This one just revels in it. Like, just imagine the worst possible boss character in a video game and cranking it up to 11. It'd still it'd be a Capcom boss. I, I thought it would be an SNK boss. Those bosses are just mean. They read your input, those cheaters. It's like they read your mind. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, SNK bosses are... Cheating cheaters are cheaters. Yep. So I'm going to pause here. Uh, I, I think this is a good place to stop for a bit. Anyway, uh, Silver, what do you think? Honestly, if we're talking about how we're sort of flashing back to other shows, that scene where uh, Lote is being crushed by all these mushrooms look, in her final moments, I was thinking of Akira. <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember that one. Now that one, that's old enough and influential enough on the anime industry, I could see it as being an homage. Homage, France, yes. <laughs> yeah, true that, true that, true that. But, I remember that one. I did. I did. <laughs> you used it three times, so I got it. <laughs> but it is funny that the one sweet element was probably doing it just to rebel against larger psyche. It's like the rest of me wants to torment, torment Akko. I'll just be really kind to her instead. <laughs> but then, once her guard is down, I'll destroy them all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's what, and that's when you realize you're at the point of no return with this character. She is, she is be doom and despair upon everyone, all the time. No amount of hugs will will fix this. Sorry, Finn. <laughs> oh. oh, man, yeah, like uh, the character here, the evil uh, Susie is just despicable, really despicable. Anyway, um, Tara, what about you? Oh, which one's the evil Susie? <laughs> The one that's eating every other Susie. Technically, that makes her a hero in my eyes. Not really, because when everybody's gone, there's nobody to keep her in check. What if it was unbridled kindness? That'd be something. Uh, oh, that would be something. Eh. But no, she, she's. this is a character who would delight in seeing her friends die, so no. But I, I will say I, I can't really shed a tear when the angel and devil got gobbled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like good riddance. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I cut your oh. hair off. No, that's okay. Uh, all I could say is for the court scene. All I could say is uh, I'm pretty sure Masako would have a great time over there. <laughs> but I like how in the movie theater they show um, these, these, this different animation. Like it's to me, it doesn't seem anime per se, but it gives me more of those. Um, old cartoonish vibes like uh i know say for example um i know cuphead isn't a cartoon but the way that game is designed it's basically a reference to the old cartoon franchise and that's what it just reminds me of and i like how they're the the um, the, that one bit with uh susie's memory it's like wow now that looks like anime and it's actually very sweet how she remembers it and when one of the Susie says this is one of my favorite memories it makes me wonder so does that mean Susie is really happy that she met akko in the first place i would guess so because akko is is similar to all the shonen characters where uh if you meet with this person you'll be friend with them like the a, like a Naruto or like a Goku, uh, fight with me. Uh, after I defeat you, we we'll be friends. So yeah, it, it's something similar to that. Although I do get some uh, Hayao Miyazaki vibes when uh, that small Susie becomes to that giant monster, and it just reminds me of those kinds of films. It's like, oh, okay, did they hire him or what? Uh, they they took inspiration, but still, yeah, that that's oh, just yes. that's just insane. No face. Oh, yeah. True that. But anywho... Uh, I'm let that one slide. Uh, sorry? You get a pass on that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anywho, uh, let's carry on because uh, Akko just asked a mushroom to drive the car to the apartment building. And uh, the crazy Susie that's murdering everyone is chasing them down. So... Uh, Akko here is looking for uh, the sleeping original Susie, as they say. She checks from room to room. Uh, she meets up with a rocker 
Akko, which is kind of awesome. Uh, we also meet with the alpacas, uh, which we call this alpaca Suzy, who likes to spit on people. And we get to see this nosy, busybody, uh, granny uh, Suzy. Something like that? Yes. Yeah, she, she's just uh, killing, uh, sorry, she's just sucking time from Akko because she's not giving her the info that she needs. And as she drags thing along, we get to see the monster Susie in the background climbing up and down the walls. And I, I do like the impatience of Akko where at first she just tries to deal with it and she gets really mad and pissed off and she screams at uh, the nosy Susie. And you can see as... She tr- she talks and talks. You you get to see in the background where the monster is just going up and down the wall, and Akko is just stomping her feet, just trying to get things along. And uh, once she gives her the info, the monster eats up the old lady. And my god, that was satisfying. It's like yeah, it's just cathartic. <laughs> I know, uh, but still, sorry. Um. The granny gave Akko info and find you you can find the original Suzy in room uh, 666. So once in... Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, it's a sign. So anywho, once Akko breaks into the room, she finds the room is covered in bramble bush. And there is a sleeping Suzy in the room. When once Akko goes into the room... She tries to go up to her, but the monster follows her through and somehow becomes a dragon. And remember when I mentioned there's a sword and shield? Somehow Akko has those two things in hand. What? It's because she drew it with the heart of the cards. I play shield and sword. Yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Everything, yeah? I- I- I'll buy it. So the monster Susie becomes a dragon and chases uh, Akko down. And once Akko gets close to Suzy, she tries to wake her up by shaking her down and screaming at her, but nothing seems to work. And then Akko remembers that, oh, I got potions that Lotte gave me. I should use them now. So she drinks a bunch of potions and tries to use mouth-to-mouth to give uh Suzy the potion and <laughs> and by this point you can see the dragon slowly changing her looks and slowly changing interests like she really wants to see those two kiss and she is really excited by the prospect of Akko kissing Suzy hmm is this a sign or something <laughs> Maybe it's maybe deep down that repressed side is just a shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's sweetie blue. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it seems that Akko failed <laughs> and Susie woke up. And let's just say that Akko's mission is successful and the world is reset. Now we go back to the waking world and it seems that. Everything is back to normal. Like, Akko wakes up in her bed. Susie's still sleeping. Lotte is trying to wake Susie up. And it feels like nothing happened. Except that everybody, I think everybody, I'm not sure about Lotte, retains their memory. Because Akko just mentions to Susie that you should really read Nightfall if you want to. Nobody's going to judge you. I bet Lotte's going to... Sorry, I bet Lotte even will lend the book to you. And Susie just mentions that, hey, didn't you sign a contract to carry my books and whatnot for one month? And with that episode ends as they go to class. And I'm sitting here saying, what? Wait, what? Was that a dream or was that reality? What am I... What? Is this the real life? Oh. Is this just fantasy? Oh. Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality. Open your eyes. 
look at the sky. Look up and... to the sky and see. <laughs> well, anywho, um, with that, let's go to final thoughts. And what do you think, Silva? Well, here's the funny thing. You laugh so much in this episode because it's fun, it's silly. But then if you th- sit and think about what you know about Susie, you're like, bad friend. Well, that may well that meeting may be a favorite memory. I'm not sure it's for the reasons we think. <laughs> I'm not sure that Susie views the world from a remotely human perspective. In some ways, they're just like, "Oh, Akko, no matter how sweet you might think this is, this is messed up. This is a messed up friendship. You, you've got enough stacked against you, hun. You gotta, you gotta do something different." Yeah, that that is true and troubling. That is true and troubling. So it, it I think it would mean something more if Susie supported Akko in some way, even if it were slightly slightly mm, atypical support. I mean, she does do that in her in the waking world with what homework and whatnot. Like what does she, does she? I I can't recall her. So do helping with that. I uh, I do actually. Mm, okay, go ahead. When uh-huh. when she first encounters the uh, devil and angel, and she she asks Akko asks them for help to find the real Susie, they pretty much make a deal. It's like you have to sign this contract, and you promise that you have to carry her stuff for a month and clean the room and everything like that. And Akko signed the contract because she's like, oh, this is just a dream. It, it's not real. But but I mean, does Susie help Akko? Not the not yeah. The other way. In general, like uh, give her support. And help her with homework and whatnot. I- I'm remembering the one where Akko enrolled Susie and Lotte in the flying contest. Oh yeah, so where where she uses her mushrooms to trip up other players, and I don't know if she made the potion to make the broom hop. I I guess it could be her, but it's one of those things where yes, Susie does help Akko in her own special way. But is it a good special way? Uh, I don't know. I feel like this episode kind of tarnished Susie's uh, characteristics a bit. I know it's funny and on brand, but it really shows her that she's a psychopath. She walks the path of the psychos. Hmm? Psycho killer. (laughs) Uh, Anything more to add, Silver? No, I don't hate Susie, but I'm also like, you know, if there was meant to... For an episode that's meant to show her multi-facets, it didn't go into her depth. There are facets and there is depth. And we saw more of the former than the latter. It's one of those cases where I feel like it's on brand for Susie where, yeah, this is her character. She is a really, really psychotic friend. But yeah, it's it's a one note character. Yeah, 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 she's funny. She she tries to kill Akko. Ha 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 ha. ha. But it's just one note. Like uh, example, like uh, the My Little Pony comic and also uh, Teen Titans. That one Teen Titans episode. It shows multiple facets of her personality or their personalities. Like Raven, uh, the shy demure one, the angry jock kind of character, and so on. And in ponies, there's the talkative uh, Big Mac or the sophisticated one and so on. It shows multiple traits of her. And I think in which they try to do so. But every time when Susie tries to divert from the norm, quote-unquote norm, um, those uh, mindset or those personality gets murdered, for lack of a better word. Oh, yeah. She kills him. Yeah. So, it feels like, yeah, you have multiple personalities of Susie, but in the end, they're all the same. And if you divert from the plan, they get snubbed. Well, now you're making me think of Red Dwarf. What is with this episode in Conjuring Other Associations? <laughs> it's one of those things where when we overthink, this is what happened. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, Tara, what about you? Uh, so, I mean, it, I still have the same as always. It's it's a mixed reaction for me. It makes you go on a wild mushroom ride. <laughs> but it has some good moments. It makes you laugh. It's one of those episodes, like, I'm pretty sure a lot of animes have these moments where it's like, oh, you know, we're going to take a 
step away from being so serious and have one episode where you can relax and have a good laugh out of it. And I feel like this is one of those episodes. Um, some people, some people might say filler, but I, I don't think so for Little Witch. You think so? Yeah. Most <laughs> of the time when you take a look-see at most of the Little Witch episodes, they don't really fill in the arc of a filler. Like, usually a filler episode is an episode where the stakes are not high or non-existent at all because uh, they don't really move the character or don't really improve the character in any shape or form. Even if they do improve the character, is forgotten in a later episode. Like, it doesn't really matter. But for witches, from what I can tell, most of the time, they're kind of character builders. Because even though nothing really huge happens in the episode, or nothing, uh, what you call this, uh, huge is the word, yes. Uh, there's, in the end, you get to see the character's growth. Uh, for example, we get to see, what, the uh, Lotte with the Nightfall books. Some people might say that could be a filler episode. But we get to see her gain more confidence and... Uh, what was it, Silver? Well, express herself or inspire others. That too. And remember when uh, the Nightfall author give the what quill to her to become the next uh, author? Yeah, she didn't want it. But I, I forget exactly her argument. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Like she, uh, some people need. Uh, some people are leaders. Some people are followers, and she is a follower, and she'll support that way. I think I remember something like that. Uh, I, I, sorry. I guess I, my memory's a little faulty on this one. <laughs> yeah, same here, man. It's okay. But to me, most of the Little Witch episodes either don't have a quote unquote full, uh, what you might call this. A filler episode, or even if they're filler episodes, they develop the character more and make us like her. Um, one of those things is the furry episode where Akko turns into a bunny, or the other one where she turns into a fish. But anywho, um, Tara, anything more to add? No, that's everything for me. All right, and as for me, this episode was a lot of fun and very entertaining. I think I said my peace when I interrupted the guys. Sorry about that. It's all good. And yeah, I, I, it, it, it is a very fun episode to watch. Like the art, the animation, it's cool. Like go watch it because they did a lot of work on this one and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So anywho, um, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I believe that we'll be heading back to the MLP comics. Yep. As we, well, we've we've run our course for the current show, but by the time this, we, as you folks listen to this podcast, we'll probably be a week away from uh, Pony Life. Oh my God, I am afraid of that one. Eh, I will embrace whatever is before us. Oh, same here. I'm same here. I'm just scared that whatever might be shown to us, we might have a negative reaction to it. Well, either way, next week we will go back with My Little Pony issue 73 and with Fluttershy has gone wild. Oh, my. Oh, my. Me like that episode. I remember that one. Okay, first off, I jinx on the both of you. <laughs> uh, to, to Norman, the fact that you said me likey that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you got the mean the double meaning. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Plus, I'm a bit sleepy right now. <laughs> I'm running on fumes. Well, I've just... I'm just going to leave that for the discussion of the, for the Patreon supporters. <laughs> but at the same time, too, uh, this is the first appearance of uh, Tony Kosusko. Uh, Kosis, Kosusko? If I remember right? Was it the first time? I'm not even, even going to try and pronounce that name. Pencils. Yes. I've probably botched his name so many times now, <laughs> I wouldn't blame him for holding a grudge. <laughs> Uh, Kusisko, if I remember right. Kusisko. Sometimes I just need to see his name. But yes, this is... <laughs> but this is his first Kusisko. appearance and this is his art. And he brought it in. Like, he brought it in and he showed uh, people why he is awesome at it. Anyway, um, yes. 
uh, we'll be reviewing Pony episode, sorry, uh, Pony Comics issue number 73 next week. So stick around for that. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitionalgmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the Media Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, my personal Twitter account is uh, MLP Silver Quill, which a quick search on Twitter should turn things up. You can also find me on DeviantArt under the same name. If you go for Silver Quill on Patreon or Kofi, you can find me and support my videos, for which I'd be very grateful. And then a search of Silver Quill or After the Fact, I shall appear on the YouTubes. And as we get closer to the return of comics, you can find me on Equestria Daily, posting editorials on, and reviews on the Wednesdays. All right, guys, go check him out there because uh, this might be a bit late, but uh, he recently uploaded a new video and new video was awesome. Even though it's a review of uh, the Pony episode, what was it again, Silver? Uh, the point of no yes, return. The point of no return. Somehow he managed to slip in a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure cartoon review in it too. Like man, I remember watching that when I was a kid. <laughs> hey, there we go. But I was, I was like, even though, did you not like that? Episode? No, 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 no. I mean, uh, what what I mean by that is, uh, Pony episode review. You slip in a Bill and Ted review at the same time too. Like, wow, two in one. That's very rare. Not many. Reviewers do those kind of things. Two for yes. one. Two, Two for one. Yay, bonus. Tara, what about you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324. Or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, <laughs> including my Patreon page and my Kofi page. Nice. Go do so. Go support Terra. He is an awesome guy. Remember the... Uh, pony... Uh, one of our videos that we did live... Is his doing. He was responsible for that. So go support him. Awesome guy. So anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also get us on PanelaLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash The MBS Show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Tristan, and also Best of Light. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vakbil. And I am Toitera. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of The MBS Show. See ya! Adios. Bye bye. There's a lot of mushrooms, and I'm not 100 percent sure if they're good or not. Tara, what do you think? I told you, I don't have any mushrooms. You liar! We can see them growing on your back. Says we always know you've been a fun guy. <laughs> it's a flesh wound. <laughs>